pretty much everyone. So uh, Tessa, are you there? There she is, everybody. Hi. <laughs> hey, Tessa. How's Hi, it going? Really, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. It's so nice to see you. And I've been kind of listening in um, a little bit, which is such a, a pleasure and a privilege. And it's, it's nice to see all you girls. Awesome. Well, we're all really excited. We got, I can see, I don't know if you can see their faces. So these girls are from all across Canada from ages like five to 18, um, coast to coast to coast. I'm sure many of them also figure skated or maybe do figure skate. And so um, it's also just awesome to have you. This is your first time kind of at WICFest virtually. <laughs> yes, I know yeah. I've been a fan for a while, obviously of yours, but also of what you do with WICFest. So it's neat to see how things uh, run, although I guess it's different for you guys this year. A little different with the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, we're virtual, but um, but we're happy to have you. So guys, um, I'm just gonna do a little formal introduction so you can uh, know a little bit more about Tessa than Tessa. I'm gonna throw it to you. And then um, if, at the end, when you finish, uh, we've got about half an hour, there'll, there'll definitely be lots of questions. So whenever you're ready to take some questions, if you'd like to, um, I can just help you with that. So guys, Tessa, won a gold medal in, I uh, hope I'm gonna get this right, 2010 and 2018 with um, in ice dancing and a silver in 2014. She's a three-time world champion and her and Scott Moore are the most decorated ice dancers ever, I believe. Is that true? That's right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> now, um, now that you've retired, right, I'm looking forward to hearing more about just the journey and stuff. Tessa's done a whole bunch of stuff. She's done television. She's written books. She's done TV commentating. Um, she just uh, has been part of Stars on Ice for a long time. Maybe some of you have seen her. And on Friday, uh, her and Scott were given the Order of Canada, which is the highest civilian order that you can get in Canada. So congratulations uh, with that. And I will throw it over to you, Tessa, and uh, let you take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Quite an introduction. Um, and it's so nice to see so many smiling faces. I think this whole thing is a Q&A. So um, okay. I'm, I'm happy to take questions. I don't know how you usually do that. Do you put your hands up or um, yeah, well, you in know, the chat box? I'll help you, Tessa, just um, to get going. And we've got uh, quite a few girls in here. So guys, um, why don't, if you want to write the question in the chat box, you go ahead. And if you want to say it, then just say, I'd like to ask, and you can talk to Tessa directly, because I'm sure that's very exciting for some of them. So why don't we start with uh, Morgan Noseworthy. You go ahead with the first question for Tessa. Tessa, have you been to Yellowknife before? <laughs> Good question, Morgan. I have been. I yeah. went last year for the first time and it was magical. I would actually love to go back. It was such a great yeah. experience. And um, um, I saw you at the airport there, <laughs> um, but you said it was something secret that you could not say what you were there for. That's right. I was <laughs> under strict orders to keep it top secret, but um, yeah. you know, now that's been released, it was for Tourism Canada um what we were filming for so yeah it's nice to see you again morgan yeah <laughs> and you also skated with a couple of my friends on the ice at the yellow knife multiplex so oh awesome oh that's right yeah i stopped yeah. in and saw they were really talented skaters um yeah. and just from a show of hands have many of you figure skated before i don't know some some shaking heads, the toe picks aren't for you guys. <laughs> I've, um, I've only been to hockey skates a few times, but I love, and my goal is to fully one day be all the gear. I want every bit of equipment on, and I want to barrel around the ice and body check and um, all of those things, <laughs> but I have a ways to go. Tell us a little bit, Tessa, um, how you, you got into figure skating, how you chose that as your sport, because you grew up in London, Ontario. So how did it all kind of come and then, um, you know, to get to where you are today? Yeah, I, I'm the youngest of four kids. And um, my, you know, it's a, I came from a really athletic family. So we all tried many different activities and sports. And it was really important for my parents to expose us to things. And skating was just kind of one of the things on the list. And um, I, my grade one class, was going on a field trip to the arena. So I really wanted to learn uh, how to do it before going with my classmates. And my grandma took me to the rink. And so I was about six years old when I skated for the first time. But when I was just seven years old, I was paired with Scott, my skating partner. And we ended up skating together for 22 years. But 
at that point in the early days, we could never have known that we would make it our career. It was just something we really liked to do. I love to dance and I love to compete. And it seemed to kind of blend those worlds together. And um, we just wanted to sort of challenge one another, challenge ourselves to be the best that we could be, but in juvenile and novice and pre-novice. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't necessarily on the, uh, we weren't thinking Olympic stage at that point. It just sort of evolved. For sure. And so, you know, you, you become like a, the, the best in the world for a long time with Scott. Tell us a little bit about how you and Scott connected as partners and what was it like training and being around the same person for so many years? Like, did you guys ever like fight or <laughs> I don't know, like teammates? Like, how did you get along and how did you get so good together? It, you know, it's interesting, Haley, because I often admire this, this notion of being on a bigger team has always fascinated me. And I thought like, how neat that you would have, you know, 20 some odd other teammates to go to bat for you and support you and protect you. And Scott and I sort of had to create a team that was larger than just the two of us. So we had our coaches and our sports psychologists, our nutritionists, and we ended up feeling like we were on also a bigger team, but ultimately it was just the two of us who took the ice together. Um, of course we had disagreements but I think from an early age, uh, I can remember being eight and 10, sitting down with a coach of ours. And we talked about the fact that we had common goals. So we were working towards the same thing with this sort of aligned vision. And also we talked about communicating. So the words that we chose to use with one another, how they impacted and made the other feel. And we really wanted to uplift one another. We wanted to be this like safe place, the support system for one another. And that was the foundation, I think, of our success that, that we could, even on the tough days, rally behind one another and, and really be there, you know, um, through thick and thin for one another. So I'm so grateful that I got to live my sport experience with, you know, my best friend. Yeah, you guys would have uh, would have been through a lot of things that only the two of you could ever understand as well. Um, so we have some good questions coming in here. So um, I'm going to throw it to Leah Weir. You have a question, Leah. Why don't you ask your question? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I always feel pressure and I still get nervous for, for things that I do, whether that's with school or speaking or, um, you know, a new challenge. I think I was eight. Um, eight maybe when we had our first competition seven or eight and I'm sure I was quite nervous I think Scott messed up the steps <laughs> to our dance in one of the first early competitions we hit the boards uh in one of our other competitions and uh so it wasn't a smooth start by any means but um you know we felt nervous right until the end of our competitive career too maybe the, the most nerves um so we had to work on our breathing and visualizing and most importantly, remember that we were prepared. So we, we knew that if we had put in all of the work beforehand, that we, we had set ourselves up to be successful on the ice as best we possibly could. Yeah, for sure. I always felt that the longer my career went, the more of a nutcase I became. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suddenly for there sure. are expectations and this yeah. idea of how you will perform and, and what is expected of you. So yeah, I can only imagine, Haley. Uh, 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 Jenna, Jenna, you have a question that you would like to ask. Um, Mariella, I think you have a, a question uh, for Tessa. Yeah, what a cool story about your mom. You have a close connection support. My favorite thing about Scott, I mean, it's a long list. It's hard to choose. I think his sense of humor. We laughed a lot. So even when we were working really, really hard, um, he never took himself too seriously and he always kept me laughing. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, very good question. Haley, we'll go to the Haley McGarrow. What, uh, what question do you have, Haley? Haley and Jada both have the same question, but Haley, go ahead. Okay. Are you there? Okay. Is Jada there? Do you want to ask Jada? The same club um about 10 or 15 minutes from where I grew up and it was actually his mom and his aunt who ran the skating school so his aunt Carol um coached both of us in single skating so that's where like we were doing jumps and spins individually and I think we just happened to be the right height for one another and they stuck us together and and people probably just thought it was cute and funny because we weren't really that talented but we, we just matched together and we would skate around the ice holding hands um, so I think it was more of a, a comedy act for the first little bit for people. <laughs> it was entertaining. 
That's great. Uh, oh, here, Chloe has a good one. Uh, Chloe, you go ahead. You might what be on was the, What was the hardest trick you had to learn in figure skating? Oh, that's a good question. I, you know, the real answer is kind of boring because there were a couple of times in my career because of an injury that I had to change my mechanics and totally shift the way that my brain cued my muscles to skate. So much like you guys, I'm sure you already have um, these patterns and mechanisms in place and techniques and things like that. And I had to, to completely change them. It was a little bit like learning to write with the other hand, you know, it was not comfortable. So I would think that was that was probably the hardest. Um, but as far as a trick, we did this lift where I balanced on Scott's leg and I didn't hold on. And then we called it the goose. And then at some point I jumped off of him and I did a 360 rotation and landed on one foot. And, and that took a lot of practice. <laughs> it took a lot of, and a lot of falling. <laughs> Yeah. Now, Barb Underhill was telling us yesterday, she actually showed us a couple of videos of her and Paul falling at the Olympics and just the throw. Um, I forget what, what was the one that she coined? Do you remember it? Uh, um, the, uh, the leap, leap of faith. faith. Oh, the, the leap, leap of faith. faith. Yes. Good one, Kaylee. The leap of faith. So have you, um, now I know you guys are dancers, so you're not getting thrown, but were you ever afraid to get like thrown I mean I'd be horrified but <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because we tried to do the leap of faith we did a baby 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 version of it um in one of, one of our programs but uh, I remember watching that video endlessly um I we tried to be pretty careful about things at the end of our career when we were trying to be a little more innovative we were practicing a trick where I stood on Scott's shoulders and didn't hold on but I was like on my blades on his shoulders and I'm just not used to being that high up uh, so that was terrifying and we spent so long practicing it it wasn't even that cool and then later learned that it would be illegal anyways for us to execute um, so I, that's probably the most terrified I've been but Scott was always really safe about it I knew that he would protect me and um, you know do his best not to let me fall <laughs> you better not hey? yeah <laughs> uh, okay Molly Molly Coons you have a question You have to unmute Molly. Yep. Uh, okay, I'm going to just say Molly's question. She's having trouble. Um, her question is, have you ever been paired with anyone other than Scott? Because we all know as you and Scott, but tell us about your, your other pairings. Good question. No, actually. No, I never was. And I, I, I partnered with him when I was so young. And then, um, you know, I, I couldn't imagine ever skating with anyone else. So, no, it was just the two of us. Well, that's pretty yeah. rare, I would Yeah, say. Scott had one partner before me um, when he was, yeah, he was really, really young. But uh, no, I never had another one. <laughs> good question. Uh, Bryn D, that's a good question, Bryn D. Do you have any good question? I'd be curious about yours, Bryn, afterwards you can answer, but... I did, and in the early part of my career, I was really superstitious. Uh, I had to have my water bottle in a certain place on the boards and my guards, and I put my, I always put my left skate on before my right and certain things like that. I had to have a safety pin in my dress, and I, I was a little crazy about it. And we took a break from competing and then came back um, in, in preparation for the 2018 Olympics. And in that comeback period, I tried to throw all my superstitions out the window because I really wanted to feel like I didn't need anything to to be okay on the ice I just knew that once the music started I, I knew what to do and I think I was mostly good about it Scott and I probably had like a hand squeeze or you know a wink that we would give one another just more of a out of routine or ritual but um in the end I tried not to be um so OCD about my guards and stuff <laughs> <laughs> we all have our, our quirks. I always said I never had any superstitions, but then I somebody asked me and I was like, oh, I, uh, I put my equipment on the exact same way every day. So I guess yeah. that's a superstition. But yeah, uh, uh, yeah. did you want to tell us your superstition? Forget who asked that question. Brent. But what, Brent, Brent, yes. Brent. Tell us your, okay. Tessa, who's more superstitious, hockey players or figure skaters? I think hockey players. In this, <laughs> in this small glimpse that I'm getting into the world, I think hockey player. What do you think? I don't know. I don't really have, I, I, I think hockey players can be really like neurotic, but some, yeah, 
for sure. Probably the worst, most superstitious person I came across was Ed Belfort. He was a goalie that played in the NHL and he was just like completely off the back. Really? Goalies have a thing, right? Um, yeah. Do you miss, sorry, Haley, but do you miss playing? Like, where does that register for you? Yeah, I do miss, I do miss playing. I, I got my fix kind of being able to go on the ice with the Leafs every day. You know, I, people always say, do you miss it? And I say, well, I get to throw pucks around to the best players in the world. So I still play in my mind sometimes, but um, I miss the big stage, I guess. I, I, I miss the, the grind of every day and I miss those big moments. Um, as you know, how about you? How do you feel about that? Same, that's a really good way to put it. I think um, I find joy in all of the little things now that I couldn't do when I was training. And so that's great. And I feel maybe because I know I'm not at that level of peak performance, that I, I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation again. <laughs> I look back and like, how did we do that? Um, yeah. But I, I do miss the big stage. That's a really good way to put in those pressure filled moments. So I think I'll be constantly seeking, seeking new challenges to sort of fill that void. Yeah. Speaking of new challenges, what are you up to right now in uh, life? life post skating what kinds of things are you doing what projects and stuff yeah i've taken on a few new projects but probably the the one that's taking up the most time for me at the moment is school um so i'm i'm studying uh in business and um uh, so i'm knee deep in quantitative stuff accounting economics analytics oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds utterly that sounds like a, a slog for well, sure well i can't imagine i can't imagine your schooling is uh well, it's all heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get through it. Um, Ava has a nice question for you, Ava. I have a chronic condition with my shins and calves um, that will that will be with me forever. And I've had a few surgeries, two surgeries, almost three for it. Uh, so I think that was the hardest. It, and when I was talking before about changing mechanics and learning new technique of how to walk and skate and move. Um, that was a big part of the, the driving force was just uh, easing the workload on my shins and calves. So that was challenging. And I don't know about you guys, but it's also hard to vocalize when you're in pain. It's hard to tell your coach or your teammates that you can't, you know, you can't do all the training that day or that you're, you're really, you know, hurting because there's this, I don't know, this taboo about talking about injury. So I think part of that was just learning to, to be vulnerable and to share that and, and own it. And, and I think that honesty really helped um, us as a team, for sure. Okay. It's a good question. Yeah. We all go through injuries, right? And it's more about how we overcome them than what happens to us, I think, at the end of the day. So um, uh, I saw one. Uh, let's go to Evelyn. You have a question, Evelyn. <laughs> How did you prepare for your final Olympic skate? Good one. That's a great question. So we had, I mentioned we took a little bit of a break and then we came back for two years before the Olympic Games. And every single day for those two years, we simulated the Olympics. So we practiced feeling nervous and uncomfortable and um, we managed our nutrition and, you know, every, every different facet visualizing and every day we imagined being at the Olympic games. And so there was such a lead up where we knew that we had done everything in our power to prepare for that moment. Um, and I, I will say part of that preparation was also failing. We needed to learn what didn't work and how to come back after we fell and, and how to manage, um, you know, all of the pressure that comes with that one moment in time. So a lot of preparation and um, specifically to that exact skate after our five minute warm up on the ice, uh, we had about 40 or 45 minutes before we took the ice to perform and to compete, which was an excruciatingly long amount of time, uh, it felt like an eternity. And I was so scared. I remember just feeling so sick and my, you know, my heart was beating so fast and Scott just kept looking at me and saying, this is what we asked for. We want all of the pressure. We want, you know, we want our competitors to set world records and, and we just want to go out and do, and do what we've been doing at home every single day, have our moment. So he was really good about reminding me that, you know, Haley mentioned the pressure that that was in fact, um, part of what made it so fulfilling or those uncomfortable moments of butterflies. I'm sure you've all felt those. Yeah. I like to tell all the kids that, uh, for all you guys listening, 
butterflies. We all get nervous and we all have butterflies. I think it's great to have a team. So you had a team of one with Scott. I have a team of like 19 on a hockey team. I would always tell myself that it wasn't just me alone. I wasn't alone. The other thing I used to tell my son was when you have butterflies, you have to think of them as flying in formation. So we have butterflies. We want to get them lined up. So when we take deep breaths and get them flying in formation. So that's how... Uh, I use that one too. I love that. Yeah, it's really, and everyone feels them. So it's just who can manage that the best. And somehow you can use that as a positive little boost of energy. Like, you know, when you play Mario Kart, I don't know if that's still a thing. And you <laughs> that like, here we go. The extra boost that propels you forward. That's how I pictured this little, okay. The nerves are that little, here we go. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, there was a nice question. Uh, Ava McGinley, why don't you ask that one? How did you deal with anxiety and nervousness? Hmm. I think it became part of, so we, we trained with our biggest competitors. It's a very weird thing in figure skating where we shared a coaching staff with the people we were um, competing against, our rivals. And so every day we went and we practiced with our competitors. So every day felt like a competition. So I felt nerves and butterflies every single day. And I, I tried to learn to be comfortable with that uncomfortable feeling. And I, I journaled my thoughts a lot. I, I reflected a lot. Um, there were some breathing techniques. Have you ever done the box breathing where you breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four? Sometimes I draw that little box on my, on my leg if I need to calm down and just keeps me uh, in check. And I think, you know, sort of remembering that that's part of the beauty of sport is that anything can happen and I think that's what we we probably love about it right and so the unknown and the things that we might get nervous about for me it was always you know the physical fatigue that I knew I would feel at the end of a program it made me really nervous and how would I fight through that but it was you know reframing it into an opportunity an opportunity that I got to show the world what I've been working on um, and trying to make it as positive as possible yeah, for sure. Thank and you. you're welcome. Uh, we've got time for a few more questions here, Tessa. I think on the theme of anxiety and nervousness, there's something that can really help us, and that's pets. And so, uh, Kate, you have a question for Tessa. You might be on mute. Kate Brady. Oh. Okay, well, I'll ask it for Kate. Okay. Kate would like to know how your dog is doing. Oh, <laughs> she's great. I mean, she's probably sleeping right now. <laughs> she's not at my feet, but she's so good. She's so fun and funny and so, so sweet. I don't know what, what we did to deserve such a great dog, but she's the best. Do you have a pet, Kate? I don't know if you can write in the chat box if we can't hear you. Yeah. I don't think Kate's having technical difficulties. Oh, she has a dog. Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> they're the best, eh? We've decided at the end of Wickfest today, everyone's going to get a chance to show their pet. So at the very end, this is a big thing on these online uh, schooling now. Everybody wants to, to, uh, to have uh, a chance to show their pet. I love uh, that. Jaden, you have a nice question for Tessa. What's a saying that keeps you? What's a saying? Yeah. Oh, like a motto or something. Oh, okay. I have a couple. Um, around the Pyeongchang Olympics, um, I said often, I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. And anytime a doubt would creep into my mind, I remember skating by the judges and thinking, oh no, what if I fall? What if I disappoint Scott? You know, all those really negative thoughts that come through your brain when you're scared. And I just like, tried to quiet that noise by saying, I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Um, and for a while it was using an acronym. So fear, which is something that we often always feel. And I would think F-E-A-R, face everything and rise. And so I would try and think, you know, channel that sort of bravery or courage that I thought it might take um, to be my best. And I would say, I would say that to myself, face everything and rise. That's a great one. I've never heard of that one before. That's fantastic. Um, okay, Addison, why don't you on that line, go for it. What advice would you have to someone who has an Olympic dream? Hmm. I mean, I think 
keep it, keep it going, like keep it big and lofty and ambitious. If that's something you're really passionate about, if it's something that you love, um, allow that dream to flourish and allow that to be sort of the, the guiding light and know that every single day you, you put in the work, you do the details, um, you know, it's part of the process. I think that's a great thing to sort of um, propel you forward each and every day. But also, I mean, it can so easily get, as we all know, with sport, all consuming. And so I think there's something to a healthy balance that it doesn't have to be only that one single focus at every moment, you know, and every day, but rather we can be ex exploring other activities and other sports and um, school and art and, and all of these things that make us well-rounded humans, because I think um, it actually, in fact, makes you a better athlete as well. So there's something to balance. <laughs> Sure. Um, and along those lines, Logan has a, a good question along those lines. Go ahead, Logan. Did you ever? I felt like giving up a lot, actually, Logan. Um, I did. I think that's really normal. And it's easy from the outside to look and see the sparkle and the smiles and the podiums. But um, there was a lot of adversity and a lot of sacrifice that went into uh, pursuing sport. I think what kept me going was one, this accountability and responsibility to Scott, my partner. And two, just desiring to reach my full potential. Like I just really wanted to push my body to its limits. I wanted to see mentally, emotionally what I was able to handle. And so that kept me going because I always just felt like, oh, I could be better and I could be better. And I just wanted improvement. So it wasn't even the gold medal that, that really was the driving force and the motivator all the time. It was just trying to see, okay, how good can I be? What version of myself? Um, can I create today? So that helped. And, and the hardest part, I think probably injury, those times when, um, when I just couldn't make it through a program or I, I couldn't walk without pain, it was, that was hard to, to sort of reconcile. For sure. Um, we'll take a couple more. We're going to get punted back uh, into the main room here and I think in a couple of minutes. So I saw a couple of good ones. Uh, Olivia Gilmore has a question that I'm kind of curious about. So Olivia, and I'll, you ask your question and then I'll say why I'm curious. So go ahead, Olivia. Um, so I've always wondered this for hockey. And so I'm wondering if it'll be uh, the same. Um, is the crowd ever distracting while performing? Mm. We just have one minute. We're going to get punted, Tessa. So okay. Um, Yes, sometimes. Sometimes I loved it and I fed off that energy. And then sometimes I, I did find it to be distracting. So I was always my best when I only focused on Scott and I tried to block everything else out around me. Uh, it changed a little bit when we did show skating, but I think for competitions, I was, I was best when it was a blur. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, it's a good question. And I remember being the fan in the stands watching you guys skate, I think three Olympics in a row and so nervous. And just, I was, the, all I could think of was how naked you guys were with no equipment on. You were just like so exposed. <laughs> so do you ever feel like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And sometimes I didn't want anyone to see me or look at me. And, um, yeah. but I, that's also part of that, you know, like owning that and, and just stepping out into the light. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stepping out to the light. <laughs> Uh, Margaret has been just making chat uh, comments saying congratulations on getting the Order of Canada. You are amazing. Um, we really want to thank you. Um, I think we are, I just saw the thing for a minute, so I don't want to mid sentence you, you get yeah. cut off. We'll get thrown back to the main room and uh, I'll, I'll just thank you and then you can go from there. But um, uh, I really want to thank you, Tessa, for coming on today. It's uh, been awesome to have you. And girls, give her, give her a Wickfest uh, thanks before we go back to the main room. Thank you for all of you. Um, thank you.